the um, title of today's sermon is What Not to Wear. Yes, the television show, if you remember that. Throughout, as we've been walking through Colossians, Colossians is a story about Christ, okay? It's about how he's involved in your life, about him being the only one sufficient to be your Savior. And so, as you're looking at this, I want you to look through those lenses, that this whole thing is about you and your relationship, first and foremost, to Christ. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Paul says, since, since then, you have been raised with Christ. So set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That ultimate destination. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways and in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is in all and is in all. It should have been Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. There's a progression there of what it means to be in Christ. You know, the, the big idea for today is it's time to look at what you're wearing. Come on, Hannah. It's rough to be the preacher's child. You get to be sermon illustrations even when you're graduating you need to look at what you're wearing now last night when I came home because we were doing graduates and I got in from licensing school you know there was the discussion of just smile look at them they, they you know what was she going to wear we knew she was going to wear the robe we got all the stuff that goes with it and you got so much hair, there's no way to know that little white thing that I didn't iron. Okay? But she knew today to fit in what she had to wear. It was appropriate to what we're doing today and where she's going. But you know what? In our life, we ought to look at where we're going every day. Because everybody here in a little bit is going to look at our graduates. You can go now. Thank you. All right? I made you wait that out as long as I could. But the reality is, folks are looking at us just the same all the time. They are. Listen at how Paul writes this to the Colossians. He says, you want to dress for the life you want. You want to dress for that which you know is coming. Look at how Paul said what is coming for you. Christ. He said, set your mind on things above. Christ. Set your mind on that which is coming for you. Because when he appears, you will appear with him in glory. 
as a believer, I've trusted Jesus for my salvation. I've trusted him for eternity. I've trusted him for every moment and every day. But I don't always dress that way, do I? Because all of a sudden, it's okay. The world says some of my behaviors or some of my thoughts, they're okay. But Christ says that, Paul says, for us to put our mind on that which is to come. For that moment and that glory. What is it? How do you, what is it that you are wearing? What is it that you are showing? What is it that you are living wherever you go to this afternoon? Or what will it look like when you go home today? When you're trying to decide, anybody had the argument where you're going to eat? The Elmore clan, I don't know yet. Or when everything just didn't right at the house? Or when it's so tight at work that you are just that ball. And all of a sudden, that which doesn't look like him starts to come out. You ought to dress like what you believe in for eternity. You ought to act like that which is coming that is eternal. What are you wearing today? What is it that comes out? Here's the part that I struggle with because I don't get all this right. Right here in the middle in verses 5 through 9, Paul lists a laundry. He gives you the full laundry list. He says, I don't want you to have sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, and idolatry. He says, by the way, I want you to understand that when the words come out of your mouth, they matter. No slander, no malice, no filthy language. But you know what the problem is? And by the way, any of you who know me really well, I like to color outside the lines. I don't like to be confined within a box. But all of a sudden, sin, my friends, there is right and there is wrong. The reality is, though, our world says that so much is great and it's okay. But it's not okay here. We say, I'm a Christian, but I cuss a little bit. It's okay. Everybody looks when she walks down the road. And he says, and it doesn't match. I had, um, as part of trying to be licensed by the United Methodist, I, had, I got to see a doctor this week, a counselor, a psychologist. We're talking about one of my traits. And most of the time, I would make, it would make me smile. I, I, I don't even know that I'm borderline workaholic. He looked at me and he said, John, you know that's a form of idolatry? That you're trusting your own working ability versus re resting in God? And all of a sudden, the preacher in me just wanted to shrivel up and I'm like, this couch is way too small because I can't hide. And most of us would say, if we put that on an application, hard worker, parentheses, workaholic. Most of us, if we were hiring somebody and we saw that, it was like, yes! But it doesn't match. It doesn't match. We have to get rid of some things that are unflattering. We have to be willing to realize that it doesn't match what God is asking us to be. When J.C. was a young boy, we went through a fall and winter where we bought three different sizes of jeans. 
needless to say, when we got to summer, we didn't have any shorts. None fit him. My family remembers just like, what are you doing at night? But the reality is that you and I ought to be growing too. We ought to be growing out of something and into something. If God hadn't been changing who you are, that you're so comfortable in, this is just the way it is. And you hadn't grown in Christ. You need to look at what you're wearing. You need to look and ask, am I truly growing in Christ? Or have you just hunkered down and you're okay? Because every time I look, we are supposed to continue. The scary thing for me is that I realize I ought to be growing every day. And I don't. You ought to be growing all the time, and we don't. Let me ask you, we've been doing next steps and walking in your discipleship for, we did it for months. Do you see where you grew? Did you see, matter of fact, just do this, go, grow, and glorify. The grow part means you are growing in Christ. It's part of the vision of who we are as St. Mark. If we aren't doing that, there's something wrong. Ten, eleven, and twelve. They actually match up to my life verse out of Corinthians. He says, put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge. In the image of the creator. All of a sudden, when I start looking like my creator, that in Christ part becomes real for me. How many of you are angry at somebody right now? Don't raise your hands. I want you to think to yourself. Most of us can think of somebody we're either angry with or have been angry with. Let me give you a challenge. Pray for that person every day. Let me ask you, how many of you are praying for your spouses every day? Get up every morning, pray for that person you're angry with, you're wondering why you're struggling in your marriage, pray for them every day. Make that the first thing you do. And I understand, I look at the hackets and I know the babies come in a hurry in the morning, don't they? You go from asleep to awake because there is a child screaming. As soon as the child is calm, stop and pray. Because that's what it means when you start outgrowing that which you're comfortable in. We, I picked up a pair of pants and I started to bring them as an illustration. And I looked at them and said, I need to throw these away. They're comfortable. They got enough room in my thighs. They got enough room up here to fit all of me into. But I turn around in the back and they got two big holes on the backside. I can't wear them unless I have a really long shirt. They're comfortable. But the reality is we get comfortable in our ways that the world says it's okay that you tell the dirty joke or that you use a little off-color language. It's okay when you stare at somebody too long and you shouldn't. It's okay that you go, nah, I'm going to cheat on my taxes a little bit here. It's that gray area the world says it's okay. It fits. It's comfortable. And God says, but you're not made in my image that way. You don't look like me. That's what I created you for. How many of us are walking in the gray when we ought to be walking in the marvelous light? It's challenging for me to think about that. You ought to always be growing into new clothes. You ought to always be able to see yourself moving from who I once was 
that old self to who I am new in Christ. Because that's what it's all about. That new creation. One of the things that has been going so right, it's a connection for me. Uh, and I realize it doesn't have a whole lot to do with me. Somehow we've had people who just didn't have many relationships with God. They weren't involved in church. And as you're visiting and talking to them, it opens up conversations for me. I get to ask them about where they are with Jesus. And then the questions come about how they're growing and how they're changing. I would ask you today, where are you with Jesus? What are the new clothes he's asking you to put on? What is he asking you to grow into? By the way, I don't think it's easy. I know that he still keeps whittling away on me, and it's not easy. But that's the new creation that you are supposed to be in Christ. Is it time for you to look at what you're wearing? So that you can be that new creation. Because we actually didn't have verse 12 in this when we were dividing up the passage. But listen at how these responses happen. It happens to us when we get tense and when we get frustrated. Our, our world just gets tight. And we respond. As I told somebody in the office I was a little salty. My tongue was a little sharp this week. But all of a sudden when I start doing this. It says holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. All of a sudden, when I start responding from there, it starts to look a whole lot more like my Creator. I start to be renewed in that. What is God asking you to put on you today? What is he asking you to grow into? Because it is time for all of us to look at our words and our actions. It's time to look and see what we're wearing. Because the words, the actions that come out of us are the faith that is in here. What are you wearing today? What do you need to grow into? I'm going to pray for you and then I'm going to ask Julie to come as we honor our graduates. As we get to see who they're going to grow into, both in Christ and in the road that lies ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. That we all can walk in the marvelous light and the grace that's been provided through Jesus. Help us to grow to become who you desire. Lord, as these young people come and stand. I thank you for Julie and this church, what they poured into them. But Lord, walk with them. Fill them. Let them know your presence and your love for the days that lie ahead. Thank you, Father, for your son Jesus. Amen. on guys there we go we have been looking forward to this day for a very long time when we get to celebrate the class of 2017 as far as we can tell in the history of st mark this is the biggest class that we've ever had we can remember for those of them that were here when they were preschoolers um, we had a program back then called wacky wednesday and i remember this class their teacher miss wilma had a rope with knots tied in it and they would have to hold onto the rope and go down the hall because there were so many of them they would get lost if they didn't do that and then when they entered middle school and went through confirmation there were 28 in the confirmation class our biggest confirmation class ever and now as they graduate we have 27 young people who are active here in the life of st mark 
and we're so blessed to be able to celebrate them today. Now, we did allow them to choose their service, and we celebrated at 8.45 and at 11 o'clock traditional, and, and now we're going to call these up one at a time, and we'd like to present them with a Bible. And we want them to take this Bible as they go off into next year, just so that they'll always have the Word of God with them, and they'll remember that their church family is here for them no matter what. After they're all up here, we're going to show you all, tonight we're having a, a big blessing for them, where all the families are invited and a dinner and parents, that's when you're really going to get to cry because we have a rather long video with lots and lots of pictures. But today we're going to give you a sneak peek of that. And I have a short video introducing you to all the graduates and showing you just a little bit of what their life here at St. Mark has been like. So graduates, when I call your name, if you would go to Jennifer and then come stand by me. Grant Alexander. Meredith Bledsoe, Jake Campbell, Emily Courier. Anna Elmore, Blaine Guerin, Taylor Johnson. Nick Long, he's really good with stairs, I've watched. Haley McLaughlin, Carter Rhodes. Jack Boyd, Ellie Gioli, Alex Walden. Grayson Youngblood. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2017. <laughs> now, we're going to let them stand here for a few moments, and we invite you to enjoy the video.
as they're finishing up walking, one of the things we actually changed this year um, is I think all these kids were given a Bible at what age, Julie? Third grade. Third grade. And we realized that we wanted them to go off and um, be able to have a Bible that fit where they were. And I remember us trying to figure out how we we're going to figure out thinking through the finances of it, knowing it was the biggest class. But it was important to us that they carried out God's word with them. They had a Bible that matched where they were in their own growth. And so they got to pick them out, actually, uh, and order them. So all the graduates got those. That's cool. Um, because we want to see them grow into who God's called them.